Hello, how are you today? Welcome to my sculpting channel and a little bit more. My name is Carlos and today I want to share my passion for stop motion animation. If you're looking for some tips on how to create your puppet, how to create your set on a really friendly budget, this video could be good for you. So stick around and let's start. So everything that I'm going to show you is part of my short film that I did. I wanted to participate on Guillermo del Toro a contest. He's one of my favorite directors and we know that we have his Pinocchio movie last year on Netflix. I watch it. I really love it. I think the studio that created all the animation and the puppet is in Mexico and, uh, and it was just so inspiring that I wanted to participate. The only problem is that I that I find out about the contest like just days before the due date. So I was like no, do I even have time? Do I even try? And, uh, and I'm really glad that I try. I know I've seen so many amazing people creating things already that blow my mind. I know that I'm not going to be the winner, but uh, I'm just amazed. And it never, seeing other people's work never discouraged me to create more. It's actually the opposite effect. Uh, it blows my mind how they think and how they come up with certain scenes. So it's just really, really cool to see. If you want to check them out, uh, if you go to Instagram or TikTok and put Pinocchio contest, you will be able to see when I create mine. It took forever and sometimes it didn't show on Instagram uh, my video. I don't know why. Not many people have seen it. It's not that good, but uh, let's start. I'm gonna stop talking. So now let's start talking about puppets. So one of the things that I want to say is that I have this puppet that's falling apart which it will happen, so maybe you want to create more than one. But these three puppets, like you see, my Pinocchio, my Geppetto, and my Cricket, they don't look like the movie. They're supposed to be a representation or a styles, the way we would see it. So I make them look a little bit more like me. But even if I'm going to talk about each one and how I make them, I already uploaded a video of each one that I'm going to put in the description about how I made them from start to zero is a speed video where you can see every single detail. Over here I'm just going to talk about how I created it. There's many many ways to create puppets for stop motion animation. When I started and it's something that not many people know, actually no one knows until now that I'm going to disclose it, is that uh, this channel is about sculpting. I do a polymer clay sculptures but I didn't know polymer clay until I tried to find a way to create a puppet for my very very first short film. This is my character. I have another one. Uh, these were my main characters on my short film. You can see that I kind of evolved. Well this is my very first one and this is well my very second one. So I, ha I don't have that much experience but I think I have improved. And uh, this one like you can see the clothes is completely horrible. I tried to sew it together. I didn't care about the shape because of course it had the the clothes, if you can say, <laughs> like that. Uh, and pretty much I find out that polymer clay existed. So that was a really, really good option. The other armatures are made out of metal, the screws, bolts that are, they're really super expensive. Actually, I could have, if I had more time, maybe to print it on my 3D printer, that I may do that in the future. I also could have created body parts like the hands or the face on my resin printer. But of course, I didn't have time. More because it takes forever to print something. And the best way to do it is with wire and polymer clay. So pretty much something that you have to know when you create puppets is that uh, with the wire is that uh, it's gonna break you now if you do it a thousand times movements they will break this one they have lasts for a long long time actually some pieces of polymer clay are gone and uh, the metal the wire is still function it hasn't break or anything but I didn't do I didn't use them that much but normally everybody will tell you that uh, the wire will break so, but don't be discouraged, you can do a lot. Like I said, this one has survived for many, many, many years and it's still going. So that's something that I wanted to say. And one way that I created my puppet is, like I said, with galvanized wire. Uh, it's kind of fragile, it's not the best, the strongest, 
but as a really flexible so I like that so when you have your wire you have to twist it to make sure that you have something stronger otherwise it won't hold the head it won't hold the hands you can actually to prevent to break after so many bending positions you can even even put another layer of wire make it three or four uh, of course it will depend on your puppet because if you put too much it's gonna be really hard to move your puppet so something to think about it but if you're doing like a tail of a dinosaur or something like that could be maybe useful I, I twist it I fold it and I start slowly creating the head then I just took to create the arms I twisted more uh, to create the hips and then to create the legs so that's really simple I'm gonna show you the photos and then to make sure that we put everything together I put some polymer clay using the thing that you know that you wanna have firm but uh, you have the other part that are able to move one thing that happened with polymer clay is that it's not the strongest so I really really recommend that uh, to create to put all the wires together the best thing is to use epoxy though the epoxy that they sell uh, on a hardware store something anywhere where they sell things to repair so it's, it's more like a paste that comes usually in tubes or squares that are two colors that you just blend them together and uh, after they're really really well mixed you can put it on your puppet and uh, you have certain minutes or sometimes you have to wait more but it will come really really solid like rock so that could be an advantage that you can use it even for the head the hands or something else it could be possible but like I said because it hardened uh, sometimes it's you cannot really have the time to sculpt something with a lot of detail but that's what I did polymer clay you just have to put it in the oven and it will become solid like I said it's it's not the hardest but it's solid enough and, uh, and it works like you can see I use polymer clay and now we're gonna start focusing on the face there are many ways many ways to create a face and the most important thing when you are an animator is that you want to try to give life to the face you want to be able to move everything around when you're a solo person that uh, you don't have a budget to create anything you have to figure out how so basically the way I did it is I create my head I create that uh, the holes on my eyes use the socket I bake it not to be hard I also bake the eyes separately I just make circles and I put a hole uh, in the middle that hole is gonna be the one that's gonna, gonna allow me to move them so and because you paint the iris you don't really see the hole but uh, after they're both baked I put an aluminum foil and that's gonna separate the two clays uh, actually when I after I did that I put a little bit more clay on around the eye just to make sure that it doesn't look just the ball and uh, some of that clay kind of touched the eye and when I finished baking it I couldn't move the eye I had to go with my tool and try to go around and see where it was a tiny piece that uh, it got glued together and I just was able to remove it and my eyes can move that was an easy fix that's something that I didn't really thought about it when I was doing my first puppet I like it one of the mistakes that I did is that uh, and I noticed before I finished the process is that the hole was a little bit bigger and my eyeball was kind of moving around so actually when I did my short film and my character is moving this eye went down by itself and I didn't even realize until it was already too late so that's one of the things that I did for the eyes and then um, I just after everything is back I painted one of the things that I wasn't sure I didn't want to mount because that's a lot of work to synchronize to try to make it talk we're talking about also adding sound so I didn't have the time so one thing that you can do if I had time I would have like I said either use my 3d resin printer or I would have cut in half the face and create multiple faces multiple expressions and just bake them and have a magnet on the back and just be able to switch each face that will, would have been the perfect um, idea but like I said I didn't have time so one of the things that you can actually also use is either magnets on the eyebrows on the um, mustache but other thing that uh, you can use also is magnetic paint 
the magnetic paint you can paint and uh and it will if you have any piece of metal or you have more paint it will just stick together and you'll be able to move that would have been a good idea but uh i couldn't find any around my local store amazon has it but it takes some days and again they have time so i have to think of another solution and the thing that i did was after my piece was completely kind of done and i made my eyebrows and my mustache separately i put a layer of clay of fresh clay just clay that was that i haven't baked even i can remove it i don't know you can see but i removed part of it i was able to do this technique and i love it because i can remove my pieces and i can just create uh whatever i want it's not perfect this technique uh, you have to be careful because it will deform the clay so you have to make sure to repair an edge take if this one also move it's gonna be a pain to to try to make it exactly the way it was because remember when we're talking about the stop motion animation you can have example your character right here you are working on it and then you go to launch or you go you just launch you're not really working for the studio if you are lucky you but um you you go to work like me then you have to come back if the table where you have your set or the set if just the puppet move a little bit you're done i mean for you you're not going to be able to see it but uh for your animation it's going to look like it's jumping around so or it did a big jump you just have to be careful but this, this was a good uh, idea it was easy it didn't took me that long it saved me time and uh, i could have had them out now that i think and do several things the same thing i did with the hand the hands can be removed it's just simple clay now that i've been playing with it so long and i've done uh some takes of this video their hands are disappearing they're not really hands anymore and that's the thing that you have the flexibility to move and give the shape that you want but when you do that you're gonna have to go back and try to recreate those details so that could be inconvenience the best thing would have been probably if i would have had time even with the uh, polymer clay just create different type of hands and uh, make sure that they cannot be attached and that would have been also a good idea so now that we have our puppets the most important thing is the clothes the clothes you have to kind of give volume bulk your character some people what they do is you they use foam i've seen people that use uh, wood i mean i use what i did with this one is, is uh, aluminum foil you could have used actually even the clothes one of the things that, that you have to be careful, like I mentioned about the movement that the camera just have completely sees everything. It's like depending on the material that you have on your puppet, if you move, if you move it around, it's possible that uh, you deform like the chest and then your movie could be like uh, it's moving, <laughs> the chest is moving around. So um, the best thing is I think foam or aluminum foil i think it's the aluminum foil doesn't allow me to move it that much that's a disadvantage but the foam i believe is better because it's light and you want to be able to to move around without your your puppet to be pulled by gravity so over here i didn't create any shoes on my character but i create holes because i say i can put a uh, nail it down at least one foot and move my character and if it is light enough, it will stay. So that's something useful. I didn't want to have time. I only wanted to have the top of the character. That's why I didn't really worry about much that. Actually, the way that I had animated these characters was with my hands. I was moving, taking a photo, moving, taking a photo. That's why it wasn't the best. But if I would have time, I would have for sure nail and, and do more uh, realistic walk more because he's carrying this prop that is just just aluminum foil and covered in polymer clay to create my the material for Pinocchio and now that we have that in mind the clothes the clothes was super easy like I said I tried to just make this clothes and it was a nightmare this one I did it so easy just with white glue the same that you use in school the cheapest and uh, it was really great that I was able just to cut parts and glue it together parts and glue it together 
and uh, it was so easy, not really messy, it stayed. Uh, one of the things that I want to just say is that um, the jeans that I used, they had these um, lines. So something also to think about is, is use whatever the clothes that you have and they can give a little bit more detail to your character. This is my Geppetto. This, this is how you create a human. Now I'm going to show you this puppet. It's a good moment to tell you that 99% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed. So please subscribe. This is my puppet. Some, something that I have, you have to think when you are doing your... When you have your notebook, when you are trying to organize your thoughts and create your whatever you need is to know if your scene needs a close-up it needs something that has a lot of details or if it doesn't so basically and this something that they did on a Guillermo del Toro Pinocchio movie is they create a Pinocchio that was tiny so it looks far away and they create another one bigger one they create just like the face to to have all those details so um, the same thing you can do that for me, I couldn't use this puppet and I was disappointed. Everything moves, it was the same thing, polymer clay and, um, and wire. The same idea, the same thing I did, I grabbed the wire, I twisted and I was creating the shape. Also the, the wings, now I wanted the wings to be able to move, to even flip around and, and move in weird positions. If I would have put polymer clay, they wouldn't been able to do that. So the way I did it is just wire and just tape. That's the only thing it is tape. Even if you don't have polymer clay, if you want to create a human puppet, I mean, it will be a kind of different world, but uh, you can do it with tape. No, it will give a texture, but it could be interesting. And, and that's that's what I did with this one and I create the big one and I create a tiny one I use it not the way I want it or the, how smooth that I want it but on um, a short film I use it that it was really far away that way it looks tiny another thing that is really really helpful when we're talking about animating puppets is most things that has that have eyes they blink so over here to make my uh, puppet blink I use just more polymer clay I paint it and in the back I use the same technique than the face it's just simple fresh or on bake polymer clay and that helped me just to put on my eyes and be able to close and open I mean the ideal is that you have three parts so it's a smooth blink but uh you for me it just work it work it that way the thing that I did to make my uh, human blink just grab more polymer clay. The good thing about the polymer clay and the hands and the face is that because it's on bake, it had the same colors, so it was so easy just to put a piece on the eye, remove it, and kind of fake the blink of that eye. So um, that will just give more light to your animation. And we'll go to the main character, my Pinocchio. Hello and I'm back. Uh, for me it has been a few years, no, a few days, but I'm back. I have problems with my video file, but uh, let's continue. I think I was talking about Pinocchio. This puppet was one of the easiest, but it has a lot of challenges. And uh, let's talk a little bit about it. Like I said, really simple, just aluminum, foil, wire, polymer clay, and that's it. No, you bake it, you paint it, and you have it. But what is the hard part, where's the challenge is that uh, doesn't have a clothes, completely naked. So one of the downsides of that is like, example, on my, um, on this puppet, I don't have to worry about being really, really careful on the joints. You cannot see cables, you cannot see aluminum foil, you cannot see anything. So that's an advantage. I don't have to worry about that. But in this one, I have to put the clay so close that, um, it hides the wire. I mean, I'm super happy that I can move everything. No, this is one of the most most uh, flexible <laughs> characters that I have done. Everything moves completely and it's just great. But the downside is that polymer clay, like I mentioned, is not really the strongest material. One of the things that I could have done to get away was just use epoxy. That could have been better. Anything that has friction will eventually break and uh, I don't know if you can see it over here I'm gonna turn my hand 
and uh, it started already to fall apart already lots of finger <laughs> there uh, also my leg over here I think you can notice more it's just falling apart and yeah that does that true I really love it because I had to do all the details it has a lot of things and, and I just love it the nose falling apart one other thing that I want to talk about the nose is that a that's an iconic scene known Pinocchio he lies and his nose grows I didn't have time to do that I wanted to do it but I told myself you know what you're not gonna have time to create many noses so just don't do it but something that happened when you work with polymer clay if you don't use aluminum foil if you don't use wire if you don't have something that the clay can grab it will completely just slide off so pretty much that's what happened I was just uh, ready I don't remember if I already painted or not but uh, pretty much just the nose was in my hand and I decided oh let's do the noses so I created other noses you're gonna see on my uh, animation on my short film no it really a short short film so I only have few seconds where this happened some people maybe it doesn't even notice well not many people have watched but uh maybe they didn't notice that I have that effect and also one of the things was the color I didn't have lighter brown and even if I try it doesn't really look like and I wish you no know, something that to think about it is the contrast between your characters and you cannot see that many details because it's just I would have to have more time to add lights to add other things to make it look all the details so but it was really fun I really love this character one of the things that you can do also when you are working with that smooth surface is that you can use glue or what we call liquid polymer clay and I just love 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 these puppets even if it's falling apart if you can you can create more than one but just have that in mind if you have something that has friction it will eventually uh, destroy that part now if you see another of the puppets I have enough um, trying to see I have enough space so so it doesn't touch no there's not that friction between uh, the clay other thing that I did also was this log this piece of wood that was gonna be how Pinocchio was gonna be made if I had a little bit time my idea was to create an effect where uh, my character was making Pinocchio slowly but it didn't work out <laughs> Now let's talk about your scene, your set pretty much, to be able to have that world where you have your puppets to be in. And the reality I did that really quickly, set, like I said, I didn't have, I know I repeat it again, but I didn't have a lot of time in materials. So I had all these in my house. I'm gonna start first with this wall. This wall, I have three, three walls, this one and one that it was glued together and it's important to think about your set because I had a scene where I have uh, Pinocchio on a table and I actually I didn't have time but uh, this was the I don't know if you can see it this is was part of my um, could have been my fairy that I was gonna come through the window this um, glow-in-the-dark coast clay and it gives like a green glow so my idea was to create completely a, a full character with wings that was gonna come through the window and uh, give light to Pinocchio. One of the things that happened is that um, to be able to have that scene, I have to put my camera in front of the wall. So I have to remove the other wall that I have over here. The same thing, if I wanted to have a scene where I have this character on the other side, which should have done it, I would have to remove this wall to be able to capture that side so the point of all this is that you have to think and plan ahead to have removable pieces that can help you when you are ready to shoot and sometimes you don't know what's gonna happen maybe you change your mind and being able to move things around is good one of the things that could happen is that uh, everything falls apart you no know, if you move the table and uh, if you don't glue them together or if you don't uh, make sure that are stuck in one place I mean for sure that also could be a challenge and could ruin your shooting so another thing that I created was this chimney which I love I love this is the first thing I mean this is the first time I create a set for an animation so I'm super happy of how it turned out and I really love this piece it's just a cardboard 
uh, nothing from the other world these bricks is just like a egg cart that I cut it in pieces uh, the bricks are not perfect aligned are not perfectly uh, actually you have a big gap but um, they're not really close together because I wasn't sure if I had enough to cover the whole thing so I just went for it I was praying yes please to be able to do it and I did it no, so I was really happy and then I just painted and there's the result. One other thing that I did is I have these lights from the Dollar Dream. All these already had it, but you, it's where you can get it for cheap. Either the cardboard, these candles, that not anymore a dollar. <laughs> but uh, I use it to create kind of like, it looks really bad because it's tiny. If I would have time, budget, and I would have gone to the store, what I would have done, and if you can do it, that's, that's just like a tip, is to have like five of these. doesn't have to be five, but just a number that I like. <laughs> five of these and use my glue gun to create different shapes of flame. First of all, to create something bigger and the light will go through the, um, the glue gun. And uh, it will be like, like it will look better, bigger and I will be able to do an animation you now swapping the the other different types and I think that would have been better but for this occasion I think it was good one thing that I did to try to hide the plastic was to use this material if you're new here uh, this is a bilingual sculpting channel I do a lot of sculpting with different materials so I use some of my monster clay to create like a log to have wood not to try to to hide that it's not the best but uh, I think it worked out another thing that I created was this table this table is simple cardboard uh, from an Amazon box not delivery then I have a piece of foam and I put uh, just tape I didn't have time to paint it so I only created like um, some texture and, uh, and this is how it turned out and I created this lamp from these sticks that are more for s'mores. That's actually how I created, coming back to my wall, uh, that's how I created the frame of my window. And I had this plastic from a box, from a action figure. That's why the window is so small, but I do like the rounded one. I do like the one in the movie, it's just a better, a better design. But I only had this one, I only had that type of plastic, that's why it's so small. So, but I use these sticks to create that and also to create this kind of a lamp and uh, I'm so impressed that I, everything I glue is just with white glue. So um, I'm going to remove this just to show you that the foam I just made a hole on the bottom. This was this candle kind of so hard to turn on and uh, it's just kind of stuck really really uh, into the plastic, I don't know, but uh, I'm telling you this because when I had it and I was ready to animate I turned it on and I accidentally was moving uh, this table but I was able just to put this lamp and you can only see the tip and that's why I just created the lamp to to make sense but I think it doesn't being just like that doesn't look that bad either but it's really important that if you can use any lights to go around your scene could give it that more realistic look or just better look uh, one other thing that I created was this table which I really like this is a piece of wood that I cut it in pieces I glue them together to make it thicker I also glue you know, from the same uh, wood the legs and I did it again just with white glue the same that they use at school and also I used the uh, small sticks to create this kind of detail. One other thing that I didn't care about was to paint or do anything over here because I knew the camera wasn't gonna look in the other direction. The same thing with this one. No, I didn't care about the back. I didn't care that it looks really bad. I had the seat. No, we can say I didn't have time to create like a proper chair. So I created this thing and um, also I didn't care about this part because the camera wasn't gonna look at this. And the way I did it is just I sit my uh, character and I put my desk and pretty much that's it. But one other thing that I did is with masking tape, make sure that this was completely glued to the floor. The same thing with the chair. 
actually also I do put some masking tape on my character and wrap it on the shirt to make sure that everything was glued together to make sure when I was animating nothing was moving uh, it didn't work completely perfectly but I think it did work one other thing that I want to say that is important that if you have the time to create all the details on any part because when you are animating you have many ideas that maybe you didn't thought before so if you decide to move your table or just to move your camera and then suddenly it's gonna see this side I mean it's not what you want if you have everything completely created the best possible for sure you can move your camera around without worrying another thing that I created was this book well actually it's supposed to be like an album it's just a piece of aluminum foil I wrap it with polymer clay and create some lines to create the the pages this was just like an album where my character was gonna supposedly finish looking remembering his kid he was alive okay now we did the set was really simple but I hope that you have uh, some ideas now I want to give you some tips when you're ready to shoot or when you're shooting so basically one of the things that I didn't have a lot of space and uh, I could have used a lot of lights no I wish I could have the space and the time to have five lights or even more uh, or at least three that was, that is kind of the basic but I only use one and then later on I found out another one so I can say I used two I used the main one and I wanted to have one that separates my character from the background so it is a little bit bulky even if it is a small and one of the issues because I didn't plan ahead with this light is that you can see it on the shot so if I had more time I would have created a better barn doors or a better system to hide it that could have even maybe been part of the set and one of the things that I can give you that is more really really important is that I didn't have a lot of space so I have my main light just behind me I have my camera in front of me on the side and I was pressing to take the shot every time that I was shooting I was trying to move around to make sure that uh, the same amount of light was lighting my scene the problem of that of course it didn't work is that uh, the camera sees everything no your naked eye cannot really see the changes of light but uh, I was trying to and, uh, and you can see different intensity of light on my scene and that's why that happened the best thing is to be far away and use a controller to be able just to take the shot come back move your puppet step away take the shot and that will be really really easy not only because of the lights no the light flickering is a really good technique you can even use what we call in photography a flag where you completely stop the light and do some effects but the problem is that uh, I didn't want to do that in this case if you have a, like a campfire or even the fire of your chimney and you want that to be like the main focus you can do an effect like that but you have just to be careful because it will change and if you change a lot it will ruin your shot so another thing is when I, you press your camera the button of the camera the camera will move no it will shake a little bit they actually I had to take something that is that I know it doesn't move at all on my scene and try to every single shot try to adjust lower the transparency and try to adjust and make sure that every single photo aligns to that piece that doesn't move and, uh, and you can try to make it smooth but you remember when you're pressing you're moving the camera so that's why the controller is the best if you don't have it what you can do is set up the automatic shooting just two seconds five seconds and just hope that the camera is not moving after you press the button <laughs> and pretty much that's it i love creating these puppets i may do more in the future so if you have any questions if you want me to create something and show it i'll be more than happy to try to do it and remember if you want to help the channel and if you want to be part of this community subscribe give a like share press that notification bell check all my links in the description remember all the materials also are in the description and see you next time enjoy art enjoy animation if you haven't watched a pinocchio movie you should do it it was great i really love it let's start creating and see you next time